Prince's guitar um, very much suited who he was. He encouraged all of us to be ourselves, and that's one of his most significant contributions. Even his guitar did that. I mean, this is kind of the key to understanding Prince through an object. When Prince donated the guitar to the American people, we didn't know a whole lot about it. We knew that it was an incredible donation. When Prince began actively pursuing a career as a musician, he began to establish himself in this landscape of music that was heavily steeped in the time in disco and funk. After a stretch of time, a lot of albums, you know, from the Beatles and Bob Dylan and others in the 1960s and early 1970s had really invited contemplation. But a new revival of dance had really swept the country. And Prince was very much a part of that, and that was a fundamental part of his DNA that remained in place for the rest of his career. He built slowly a career through the, you know, the late 1970s and the early 18s. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Prince. People knew who Prince was. He wasn't a superstar. I mean, this is not the kind of music that comes from Minneapolis, Minnesota. No. <laughs> That's it. You're very shy, modest. So by 1982, when he released 1999, he had developed a following in different parts of the country and then totally hit the airwaves across the country um, with the singles that came off of that record. A number of critics really see Prince as the exemplar, kind of the first successful um, artist who undertook a postmodern view of music making in the sense that he wasn't simply a crossover artist, he was actually breaking apart these genres and breaking apart musical categories and repurposing them to meet his own ends. He was encouraging all of us to reimagine those boundaries and those binaries. I was brought up in a black and white world and I strive for originality in my work. The early 80s are defined visually in many ways through the influences of MTV, which was strike at the imaginations of teenagers in profound ways. Prince was one of the very first to challenge that virtual exclusion of black artists on MTV when he produced 1999. The song's end-of-time lyrics and up-tempo dance beats resulted in an Armageddon party jam. He, along with Michael Jackson in particular, were the first artists to begin to remake the roster of artists that were represented on MTV at the time. After 1984, Prince had turned the country purple. He's working on the film Purple Rain, and as he's working on the songs that will go into the soundtrack, he begins thinking about a guitar that really suits what he sees as his sound. When he asked Newt Coupe in Minneapolis to, to execute this design, to take Jeff Levin's bass and to transform that into a guitar, they looked around the shop to see how they could do that because no guitar manufacturer was building guitar bodies quite shaped like that. And everyone stopped in their tracks when they saw it. The body broke the conformity of kind of jagged um, edges that you'd see in most guitars from the period, kind of very masculine colors, masculine designs. This was a guitar that was flowing. Eventually, within a couple of years, he's asking his guitar techs to apply new fret markers on the guitar that combine the Mars and Venus male and female symbols um, along the neck of the guitar. So he had this guitar built in the fall of 1983, and it's, it's around the time that they're still working on Purple Rain and begins introducing them to live audiences for the first time following the release of the film and the soundtrack. Prince would take two of these guitars, the cloud guitars on the road with him. He had a penchant for throwing guitars up in the air. So he would, in dramatic flair, sling these guitars that were custom built for him, these beautiful jewels. He would just throw them up in the air 
and often the roadies would catch them. They didn't always catch them. Um, sometimes they came crashing down on the stage and would break in half. So he began shipping them back to Minneapolis where the, <laughs> the crew had rebuilt the guitar, stripped the paint, they repainted a different color, and then he would coordinate guitars with his um, clothes that he was gonna wear on stage. Prince donated the guitar to the Smithsonian in 1993, and it was a relatively unceremonious affair. He essentially packed up the guitar and shipped it. Hmm. The Smithsonian staff at the time developed the story around Newt Coupe, the, the company in Minneapolis that had um, developed the guitar. The staff immediately noticed on the back of the guitar, there's a little fleck of another color underneath the yellow paint. John Woodland, who's managing the guitar collection at Paisley Park, reached out to us. He believed that some specific analysis of the guitar might help us to better understand its history. We loaded up the guitar under armed guard in a van, drove it about 600 feet next door to the Natural History Museum. <laughs> brought it inside and ran it in the CT scanner. The CT scan revealed for us what the guitar was made from and how it was made and how well or not it was taken care of. We were able to identify seven distinct layers of paint on this guitar. The colors included white, peach, there's a couple different layers of yellow as well. The CT scan, the paint analysis that is ongoing, the oral histories that we are continuing to collect as we work with Paisley Park, it's pointed all signs to the conclusion that this actually is the guitar that's hanging in the window in Purple Rain. In the film, as a white instrument, this is the guitar that's on the cover of Sign of the Times, which is perhaps his most critically acclaimed album. It was a feeling of discovery that I'd, I'd never experienced before, um, and a feeling of joy. Everything comes together with this instrument. And the mystery continues to um, intrigue us as we search for more answers and draw more conclusive evidence at the same time. There's an exuberance about the song Purple Rain that was totally enchanting. As a kid growing up in southeastern Alabama, he represented a world that I had not yet encountered but was eager to find. It is impossible to overstate how transformative Prince was as a guitar player. He was incredibly inventive on the instrument, um, incredibly melodic and thoughtful in his musical choices on the guitar. I mean, the guitar solo in Purple Rain can still bring tears to my eyes. <laughs>